Okay, we're in the farm course, level one stuff, good for all audiences, and here's the basic medic math lesson. And like I said earlier, there's no excuse that's going to be valid around here for, oh, I can't do math, because if you can't do this basic math, you can't be a medic. I, I swear this is no harder than eighth grade math. And I will further say that even though math comes easy to me, there's no excuse here. This is... Um, something that everybody's got to get. So because math does come easy to some folks, I'm not going to, to beat you up and make you keep doing exercises that you've proven you can do. But at, on the other hand, uh, a lot of us do need the reps. And so here are the things that we're going to learn to do. We're going to learn to change pounds into kilograms. We're going to learn to change micrograms, milligrams back and forth. We're going to talk about concentrations and volumes. Pounds to kilograms is really easy. The thing is that we in the United States are used to estimating weights based in pounds, but most medications that are weight-based in their dose um, go off of kilograms. And so you need to learn to look at a patient and guess their weight. And I think you guess in pounds and convert to kilograms. Uh, you may, after some experience, just start guessing in kilograms. And I think you're going to find that your guess is a little bit off anyway. And so the fact that your math might be a little off um, in, in many cases is just compounding the error. So, you know, and, and we'll show you the video in class and you'll learn to know what whack it in half means. And that's what a lot of folks are doing. But if, <clears throat> And what I mean is that really you can divide things by 2 rather than 2.2 because dividing by 2 is easy. Dividing by 2.2 is a little bit less easy, but no big deal. And so if you think a guy weighs, I don't know, 240, 250, okay. So what is that? Well, it's 120, 125 kilos, something like that. You've divided it in half, more or less. That's okay for estimations and such. When you're answering questions on a quiz or on a registry test and they say, convert 220 kilograms into pounds, or 220 pounds into kilograms, I'm sorry, 220 pounds, how many kilograms is that? Go ahead and divide it for real and, um, and get the, the correct answer. Do the 2.2. So that's that. So we'll do a little practice problems. Patient weighs 155 pounds. How many kilos is that? Well, you can whack it in half and get uh, 70, 75, or you can really do it and it comes out right on 70. Patient weighs 110 pounds. How many kilos is that? How would you do it? Divide it by 2.2. So I can whack it in half real easy and make it be 55. Let's divide it by 2.2 and let's get 50. Let's do it right. Um, patient weighs 200 pounds. How many kilos is that? 91. So you can go back and, and uh, you know practice these as much as you need to. It's just use of a calculator is all it is. Okay, now this, micrograms to milligrams and milligrams to micrograms, here's the deal. When we're dealing with dosages on medications, particularly those for infusions, we're talking in terms of micrograms per minute or micrograms per kilogram per minute. And when we're mixing those drips, typically we're dealing with larger amounts, so milligrams. So it's very helpful. It's very safe for your patient. Patient safety is a key and math and patient safety go hand in hand. And so we want to be able to convert these back and forth. Now this is easy. This is really easy. There's a thousand micrograms in a milligram. And so we're just moving that decimal three places, one way or the other. Okay, so the decimal for one milligram is 1.0. We're going to move it three to the right and make it 1,000 micrograms. And if you were going backwards like that, if you're trying to go um, from micrograms to milligrams, you would just move the decimal three places the other way. So a common error that you could make would be that you move the decimal the wrong direction. You knew it was three spaces, but you went left when you should have gone right. It's kind of like back when we were um, dealing with uh, drip rates and the factor on drip rates. Instead of multiplying by your factor, you were dividing or vice versa. So here's a practice problem, and I'll stop the video. 400 milligrams is equal to how many mics? Stop the video. <clears throat> and now we start back up again, and we move the decimal three places to the right. 
50 milligrams. How many mics? Well, you would move it three places to the right. 400 mics is how many milligrams? You would move it three the other way. And we don't like decimals. Decimals can cause us problems. So we like to try to deal with things without decimals if we can. Without leading decimals is what I'm saying. I should back up. That 0 0.4, the reason we're writing it as 0 0.4 instead of just 4, is that if you wrote it as just 4, it might be that the decimal is not seen. But if you write it as 0 0.4, that kind of indicates to everybody that there's a decimal in there to mess with. Okay? So practice that a lot, going backwards and forwards, mics to milligrams, milligrams to mics, and, um, and get it to where you can move those decimals in the right direction and always move it three places. Now, what about a concentration? Well, a concentration is a weight divided by a volume or a weight over a volume. A weight, as in milligrams or micrograms, and a volume, which is almost always in our world, cc's. Now, I don't say milliliters, I don't write mLs, because an mL is a cc, and I just write bad, and I, and I have sloppy handwriting, and so I'm afraid that if I write mg, then I might think it's mL, or mL, I might think it's mg, so I stay clear away from mLs. mLs are not something I use. I use cc's. It's a patient safety thing. So 400 milligrams a weight divided by a volume, 250 cc's. What is the concentration in milligrams per cc? Well, you just crunch the numbers. 1.6 milligrams per cc. Now, that would be better if there was no decimal. Because decimals can just kind of get in the way and it opens up an opportunity for error. So now I would like to express that concentration in mics per cc. And what we have, we had 1.6 milligrams so how do I make that into micrograms? I just move the decimal three places. Three places. I had 1.6. I moved it three to the right. Now I've got 1,600 mics per cc. <clears throat> so, so far, we have learned. Divide by 2.2 to get kilograms when you have pounds. A 220 pounder divided by 2.2 is 100 kilos. And you'll learn to guess what people weigh and you'll learn to adjust your guesstimate to make your math quicker and easier. And sometimes you'll just guess their weight in pounds and whack it in half, and that'll be okay. But when you're working actual problems, be sure, you know, if you're actually answering a question on a quiz or something, be sure you divide by 2.2. We need to go from mics to milligrams, milligrams to micrograms. It's always moving the decimal three places. The question is, you go left or right. Think about how tiny a microgram is, microgram compared to a milligram, and that'll keep you straight. And then concentrations, the mix. What's the mix? What's the concentration? Those are written in a weight over a volume, micrograms per cc or milligrams per cc. And so that's just the way things work, and you want to make sure you can do that conversion back and forth between mics and milligrams. Last concept in this. A uh, little lesson is a volume from a dose. This is a real practically oriented thing. Here's an example. We have a 10 cc vial of diltiazem. Uh, diltiazem, also known as cardizem, it's given to slow the heart rate. It's a calcium channel blocker. It has a negative chronotropic effect, and so it slows the heart rate, slows conduction of the AV node. Doesn't close it, doesn't reboot the AV node like a denison. It just shuts it down to one lane of traffic. It, it slows down traffic through the AV node. That's a good thing sometimes when the AV node's letting too much through. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it means you haven't gone very deep in the cardiology or the uh, cardiology uh, ECG course, and that's okay. But, you know, when you get there, play this back and maybe it'll help. Diltiazem comes in 10 cc vials. The vial contains a total of 50 milligrams. You can see that by reading the vial. <clears throat> Up until I had trouble reading vials, this was pretty easy. Now the hardest part of this is actually reading the vial. Maybe you'll be there someday too. Anyway, there's 50 milligrams in 10 cc's. There's a weight, 50 milligrams, divided by a volume, 10 cc's. And so my concentration is 50 divided by 10, or 5 milligrams per cc. Hey, there's our concentration. 
here's the dose. The dose is 0.25 milligrams per kilogram given over two minutes and so we're going to take this dose of 0.25 milligrams per kilogram and we're going to see I've got a 220 pound patient that needs to deltiazem. How much does he need? Well, the tricky thing here is that 220 pounds needs to get converted to kilograms. How do you go from pounds to kilos? We'll divide it by 2.2. 220 pounds divided by 2.2 pounds per kilo comes out to 100 kilos. That's cool. So now this 100 kilogram patient is going to get 0.25 milligrams for every one of his kilos. 0.25 times 100 kilos, which comes out to be 25 milligrams. That's his dose, 25 milligrams. So give him 25 milligrams out of that vial. Well, okay, but uh, how many cc's is that? Here's where this volume from a dose thing comes in. We need 25 milligrams. The concentration is 5 milligrams per cc, and probably with your shoes on, you can figure this one out. It's 5 cc's. That's what he needs. So we're going to give him 5 cc's over 2 minutes. We'll talk about how to do that later. But right now, you're going to draw up 5 cc's. So his dose in weight is 25 milligrams. But what we really need to know is how much volume out of that concentration are we going to give him. Volume from a dose. It's a key concept. You may want to play this one over, at least the last half of it. You've got to get really good at that. And uh, we want that sort of stuff to be automatic so you're not held up while you're trying to think, should I give cardizem or not? Is it the right time to give cardizem or not? Rather than, how am I going to give cardizem? It will serve you well down the road.